In the previous video, we have discussed about the distributions of the stress and strain over the cross sections of a reinforced concrete member. This represents the cross sections of a reinforced concrete member. This represents the strain response over the cross sections. And this represents the stress block diagram of the section. The stress diagram is closely related to the response due to the strain over the section. Now we look into the stress diagram here. Under the serviceability limit state, a triangular stress diagram is developed. While under the ultimate limit state, a rectangular parabolic shape is produced. The shape is rather complicated and the calculations based on the shape is tedious. It can be represented by an equivalent rectangular stress plot as given here. From here on, we will focus our discussions based on the equivalent rectangular stress plot diagram as indicated here. Under bending, the bottom part of the section is undergoing tensile strain while the top part of the section is undergoing compressive strain. This gives us a neutral axis which separates the tension region and the compressive region. Compressive stress is developed within the compressive regions. While no stress develops at the tension regions for the concrete. The concrete is assumed not contributing any tensile stress to the section. The tensile stress is fully contributed by the reinforcement bar embedded within the sections, as indicated here. From the compressive stress here, the maximum allowable stress in the sections is the design compressive stress of the concrete. It is calculated based on these equations. In the functions of the partial factor of safety of concrete, which is equal to 1.5, and also the factors that correlate the bending strength and the crushing strength of the cylinder, which is equal to 0 0.85. Substituting the relevant value include the equations, you obtain the 0 0.567 FCK. Let's say the positions of the neutral axis is determined as at the x distance from the top of the section. The rectangular stress plot assumes that the effective compressive region is equal to 0 0.8 times the height of the neutral axis. That means the regions effectively undergo compressive strain is actually indicated here with the height of 0 0.8 times the height of the neutral axis. To determine the compressive force caused by the concrete, the effective areas undergo compression is to be multiplied with the compressive strength of the concrete. With that, the compressive force of the concrete FCC is calculated by multiplying the design stress of the concrete with the area here which is the height 0.8x times the width of the beam which is B. The equation is as given here. The compressive force here is assumed to be acting at the centroid of the stress area, which is at a position of S divided by 2 from the top of the section. As for the forces contributed by the steel, it is calculated by the 
area of the steel multiply the yield strength of the steel divided by the factor of safety of the steel. It is again the design stress multiply the effective tension area of the element. The forces in concrete and steel are in the opposite directions because the concrete is undergoing compression while the steel is undergoing tension. As these forces do not occur in the same place, there are lever arm between the forces. That means there is going to generate flexural strength within the sections. The flexural strength is related to the moment, which is the force multiply the lever arm. From the stress diagram here, we will see that the moment can either be generated by the concrete which is obtained by multiplying the concrete force with the lever arm or generated by the steel which is by multiplying the steel forces with the lever arm. As both happening in the same cross sections and based on the principles of static equilibrium, these two moments should be equivalent and thus they can be solved simultaneously. First, we look into the moment generated by the concrete. The compressive force caused by the concrete is given in the equation here. The S here can be substituted in the functions of Z, the lever arm, in order to eliminate the additional unknown in the equation. The lever arm here is actually calculated by minusing the depth of the member with the half of the height of the stress plot. Reorganize the equations, you will get S equals to 2 times D minus Z. Substitute the relevant value into the moment equations due to the concrete, you will obtain this equation. The entire equation is to be divided by BD square FCK, you will obtain this equation. The equation seems to be quite complicated. You use a factor K to represent this. Simplify the equations, you will get these equations and reorganize the equations, you will get the equations for the lever arm. The equations for the lever arm Z here is in the functions of K and D. The rest are all constants. These equations of lever arm can be substituted into the moment equations due to the steel. The equations for the forces in the steel is given here. Combine the relevant equations. You will obtain the area of reinforcement bar equals to m divided by 0 0.87 FYKZ. The Z here is referring to this equation. Based on the derivations here, there are three equations that you need to be familiar with. This include the equations for K, the equations for lever arm, and also the equations for the reinforcement bar area. These equations are the major steps for you to determine the amount of reinforcement bar in a singly reinforced member. The meaning of singly reinforced member is there is only tension reinforcement bar required. The compression reinforcement bar is not required in the sections. Based on the equations for the lever arm here, the relationship between Z, D and K 
can be represented in this table and also in this chart. The x-axis here represents the factor K, while the y-axis represents the ratio between the Z with the depth of the section. Different values of K will result in different ratio of Z per D as represented by this curve. The curve here started from 0 0.82 to 1.0. 0, 0 0.82 represents the limits of a singly reinforced member. When the Z per D ratio is less than 0 0.82, that means there will be compressive reinforcement required. With that, you will consider the Z is equals to 0.82D and you will require additional step for you to calculate the area required for the compressive reinforcement. Although the curve here indicates that there is possible for the Z to be nearly equivalent to the depth of the beam. However, Eurocode limits it to be 0 0.95. If you find that your Z is more than 0 0.95D, you will have to use the value of 0 0.95. With that, the ratio between the Z per D is actually within the range of 0 0.82 to 0 0.95. Going back to these equations, the number given by this equation should be less than 0 0.95 and they should theoretically to be greater than 0 0.82. From there, by substituting the moment and also the design strength of the steel and by calculating the lever arm, you will be able to determine the amount of reinforcement bar required in a reinforced concrete section.